Hi. Oh my goodness. It's been a long time and I'm glad to be back and hope everybody is well and that you've been doing a lot of practicing because I painted uh, when I'm home on weekends and not babysitting. Uh, I've been doing a lot of flower paintings. Uh, this is what I recently did and maybe uh, you recognize the flower. It's an anemone and uh, that was fun to do. I started with my focal point, this flower right here, and then I just drew another flower and another flower until I kind of filled up the page. I want to talk about white though today, and so I've chosen a, a camellia, which is a white flower. You know, a magnolia makes a good subject too. It's it's a matter of learning to take uh, use the white of your paper, and so we'll talk a little bit more about composition and positive and negative spaces. So. I just want to get started, and um, I've set up to show you uh, my references, some of my references, and my watercolor paper, which from time to time I'll turn and give you a, a little bit fuller view uh, as I go along, but it's, uh, I have to turn this so I can do my work. I have my flat rounds to start with again. For those of you who are new, you know, um, uh, everybody has their favorite brushes, and those of you who've been watching me paint a while, you know I like to use this half inch flat and this number six round, but I have several of them here, so sometimes you'll understand why I have more than one. My water, and of course my palette, this is a Cheat Joe's palette, and um, it, it starts with warm around to my cool colors. My purple, I was recently using for my anemones, so they're still wet. So let's get started. I'm going to be using this as my reference, and I decided to go with a vertical format. And I'm going to begin by sketching, uh, and maybe drawing a little heavier than normal uh, because I want you to be able to see my lines. And um, I'm right here in the center of the flower, which in a sense will be my focal point. And I choose not to make it too much in the middle because a target is not a good idea. You don't want your subject uh, dead center. Um, I'm seeing these really interesting little shapes. And so uh, I allow my brain and my pencil, uh, I guess it's my eyes that are doing this right now, to move around where, uh, and I gotta come, always need to come back to where my focal point is, this little interesting area. Um, and <laughs> I make little notes to myself, like these are darker, little shadowy places. Uh, just having a little variation with your pencil line can help you remember that. All right, I'm back out here to the edge of the flower. And, Uh, I'm following this edge right now, and there's another piece that fits in here. I know that when I'm drawing, I consider myself in the right side of my brain, which means that I am, uh, forget what I'm saying is what it happens. It means that I'm really concentrating on those lines of the edges of things. This flower is kind of facing uh, this way. So here we have this edge and this nice shape. It's like, almost like a little sideways heart here. And it comes back. This is a sh shaded area. It's the way the petals tend to uh, fold and move. And the bottom part of my picture is going to be made up of some leaves. Let's see here. Okay, so we have another little area of petals. They kind of run off my photograph. I'm sure there's uh, probably another line right here. Okay, so there's got to be an edge here. Yes, there is. And there's some more of these little, uh, those of you who are uh, flower people and garden people, you know all the parts of the flower, whether I assume these are little stamen pieces that are popping out down here. And again, 
there is another little dark space. All right, so the sketch of the flower has begun, and now I'm going to work on some leaves. There's a, there's some um, things that run off because you do want the whole page to be important. So I'm assuming these are kind of leaf shapes that are moving off the page. And there's this lovely leaf right here that I am drawing next. There's a little overlap with this leaf. And this one's sort of coming out from behind. This has an edge to it, so I'll try to remember to pick that up with my painting. And I'll do a few lines like this to remind myself that the veins in the leaf are coming out and down. There's a stem in here and another leaf. And looks like some leaves here. Ah, this is a stem and I want that to be pretty dominant. I want that to show up. And there's an interesting shape of a leaf that kind of curls right here. And more. Um, I'm just, I'm sort of making up a few things here. Okay, so I have pretty much, I need, a, I need something here. So I will look back at the photograph and say yes. There is another leaf, and to make this more convincing, some more overlaps. Okay, this feels like the flower to me is a little bit long here. I want to push this edge out a little more. Seems like it would do that. Um, I think I can even bring this here. Okay, that to me is a little better. And I'm looking here. I don't like this shape so much. I want to be true to the photograph, but I also want my painting to be just right. At least as close to just right as I can get it. And I don't want that hanging down too much either. I want that to be softer. Okay, I think I'm ready to begin. Now, what I do for the, the white flower is I tend to go with some soft shadows. And typically, I would wet this whole thing and throw in some color. But I think I'm going to begin with um, my three primary colors. This is my Aurelia. Now you, you can see the completed drawing, first of all, and you can probably see the sheen of where I just painted one petal. And I, I, I don't know that I'll get this whole thing completed in 20 minutes. That's my goal. But I'm going to go as far as I can and get as much painting done as I can on it. So besides the purple dripping, I wanted to show you my um, rose matter. And these are my three favorite colors for primaries is my Rillian yellow, which I do have here. You see how bright yellow that is. And my uh, Lizard, my, uh, excuse me, rose matter and oh, cobalt blue. And I need to be sure I clean my brush from, or just make sure I don't have too much color. My cobalt blue and I'll avoid that purple, is my, is my good true blue. So I see a lot of blue in these shadows. So if you can sort of see my reference, um, I'm, I'm going to shoot for a little bit of that. Uh, actually, I, I touched the red, I touched the blue, and I'm bringing in just the introduction of that shadow color. I'm going to I'm going to switch a little bit to my yellows because there's some nice lovely yellows in the um, I guess it's in the areas where the stamens are reflecting off the whites. 
of this flower. When you paint, a red, when you have a white flower, you have to leave a lot of the paper, but at the same time, you want these shadows and these colors that are reflected around. There's also a sense of the red. So by having these three little puddles, I can easily pop the color in with the tip of my brush and let them run together while that's where that's wet. I'm even inclined to put a little more uh, red to mix with that blue along the edge where it's still really wet. All right, the same thing needs to happen in the pinker areas. And look right here. This is this is a streak of uh, red, salt pinks, I should say, instead of red are present, and then we've got to go back to the blue. Now, that what I just applied is a really strong piece of blue that I'm now gonna take water and soften up that edge, and then where it's just very pale blue, move that around, and I'm not bumping into the next petal. I am just softening where I see these shattered places. I'm keeping all of this white and not losing that white. Right here, I wanted to soften that up with more water. This has a lot of blue, so I'm gonna wet that first. I'm just sort of back and forth between this wet, this water, and here, this whole petal I'm gonna wet and add that pink when it has a lot of yellow in it too. And we just let those run together. We come back up here and strengthen the yellow that's in this space. And then just add my water. And then go back in with a little bit of that rose matter. Now, I'm gonna let a lot of this dry and come back and do a bit more. And to tell you the truth, I felt like I took too much yellow up in here. I'm going to soften that up, pick up that little puddle, soften this right here where it's a lot of white. See that little spot here is pretty white. Then I'm going to go back with the blue. The blue is very dominant out here. So without touching these other petals, I'm going to come in with a red, that rose matter because it's not pure blue. I want to mix that and then I want it to soften. And then it goes back to blue. Sometimes there's a definite shape that, that one sees with these shadows this is pretty strong right here. Dark, rather, I should say, um, with what's going on in that. And then this is a pure white. There's a bit of a shadow. This is definitely a shadow here. I'm gonna come back with more blue. This is still wet, so the nice thing about that is that it still blends together. I started with this petal and I still need to make it darker here. Now this one also has a lot of blue in it. And I just touched the rose matter. And now I have the rose on my brush. So softening up what's going on here. This is almost a lavender and it's created by the rose matter in that uh, cobalt blue. More blue in here. And now I'm seeing that I missed this petal, petal up here. It has quite a bit of blue coming in. And the detail will happen after it's dry with possibly 
some shading, some shadows. And um, all right, so what I've done now is kind of given the flower some uh, color, even though it's still white. And I'm going to do, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let this area dry. I, I can get a lot stronger with the centers here, as you can see. This, this too, could get a little bolder, and I've got some nice dark browns, and of course the rusty color that I need to add. There's little spots here, whether I choose to do those little spots or not. Um, this is another reference, uh, the flowers that you can see here on the side. There's always that purplish shadow, pink, purple, yellow, blue. Those three colors make a gray in a, in a way. Okay, so next, next I'm jumping to my greens. So for my green, <sighs> look at this viridian. Wow. Uh, we've talked about greens before. Remember we talked about how um, you can use the pure green, but it's better to add the reds and browns to green. It's better to add yellow, better to add white, like water. We don't have white in watercolor. We have water. We can lighten. We can make so many different greens. Well, obviously what I just put out is enough to paint all the greens on this painting and the next three paintings. So uh, I don't waste my paint, so I'm gonna leave it sitting right there. Weirdly, my purple that dribbled down here is a color I love to add to green because look how it blues, it blues that right up. See that blue green. Um, I also like to put yellow in and, and I like to keep my warm colors on one side and my cool colors on one side. So here I go. I have to clean my brush a little bit. And I'm gonna pick up a lot of yellow. And I just put a little dab of yellow down here in this corner with my green so that I can play around with a color and I'm looking I'm saying that's too bright obviously I've got to go a little well you know what I need to do I need to take a little red well when I was painting my, my anemones I put uh, more of the actually that's called Janet's red it's a, a red it's a violet color but it's a Janet's purple violet, rose violet. I'll have to look at my tube and remember the name of that color. But it almost looks like my um, American Journey um, magenta. So it is a, in the red family, but it's also kind of purple. I just picked up a little bit of that. Now, could I use a different red? Of course, I could use any red. And what I just came up with is, look at the difference between these two greens. Now, to me, that's a better green, although that's a beautiful green. This one is more natural to the color of the leaf I have here. So with that said, I'm going to uh, start painting. I may not get all of my leaves done today, uh, but I will get you started. And um, when I finish this, you will see the finished. And basically, um, it's, it's a lot of repetition, but I do want to show you what I do with the background, OK? Um, now. This seems a bit on the tedious side. I'm getting a little bleeding right there. To, to have to paint each of these sections, leaving, um, leaving what I'm doing is, is the vein of the leaf. I know, I know this is tedious uh, doing just that, but it's going to make the leaf work. And so you know, I've been using all, all of my paintings so far this morning or this afternoon. What is this afternoon now, isn't it, Faith? I, I, I lose track of time. When you're painting, you go into that nice place and forget where you are and what you're doing. I like to use the little round brush to move into um, small areas, although you can use the wedge of this. There's nothing wrong with that. And I always take it a little darker as it moves underneath that, uh, that area where we can't see underneath, uh, it's behind the flower. Now, I said something about making the edges of the flower, uh, the leaf, the petals, uh, the leaf 
has a bit of an edge. And this is just a first coat. I don't know if you noticed the, the light outside suddenly got better. It was getting dark and then it got better. So maybe the room got better. Um, this leaf is a little rough right now, but I'm going to, oh, I've already stuck some paint on that leaf too. Let's fix this. This one hardly shows the veins, but I'm going to indicate them just a bit. Okay, so as this begins to dry, I tend to paint right over that and the lines show up. And with this, I can alternate a little bit of the lights and darks. Now, I sense a little lightness here and a little lightness right here. I could lift where I sense that light or I could just use water to lighten a spot through here so that the leaf is changing from a bit darker areas to a little bit lighter so the leaf is not the same color all the way down. And I will continue doing that throughout. This leaf has um, more of a blue tint to it, a blue feeling. And so I pick up a little bit of blue. I think those camellia leaves have a bit of blue. If you painted camellias before, uh, you notice that they're, they're, if you painted any flowers before, there are variations of all the kinds of flowers. I mean, a, a rose is not a rose is a rose, as Gertrude Stein would say, but it's, it, it, it's so many different, what are there, thousand different, 500 different kinds of roses? I'm, I don't know. But I do know that there's, you can paint one rose and it's not the same as another rose. Camellias or any flower, they have their own characteristics and obviously they change with light and perspective and time of day. And I know they're very seasonal. And I know that they're more of a spring flower. They're certainly not a fall flower. I'm not sure. Some flowers bloom more than, um, now I gave, without having to do the lights and darks, I, uh, without having to add to that one, I was able to kind of get that dark going here. For the background of this, and because what I'm gonna do real quickly is to do a few more of these leaves. So I have a sense, I feel like that's a little bright. Again, I'll, I added the purple. Uh, I'm gonna just get some color on these darker leaves and I'll try to come back and suggest their edges and their the veins. And then I'm gonna show you what I would do with a background and then come back to the middle of the flower. Uh, it should be getting dry by now. So I'm, that's, that's again, way too bright. I am using the purple and magenta to change that green. And what I, what I wanna show you right here is how you really have to project that darkness uh, for this, this leaf. This leaf right here is light and this is very dark here. This is another leaf, but it's dark. And then we're gonna do the background almost a, a black with some red in it. Um, this has to show up against, I'm doing a little negative uh, with the brush to get that edge of that leaf. I'm painting around the back.
Well, this has more, I think it has a little more than yellow going on here. It feels like I should have added that color. There. So I didn't do quite what I wanted to do with that leaf because I'll probably come back over it. But the point is it must get darker behind the leaf here. And then this one is even darker because it's going behind both of those. I'm leaving a little bit of a white edge for right now because if I don't, they're going to run together. This leaf, however, is dry. So when I'm, I'm not ready, when I'm not ready to finish something, and I know I'm going to come back to it uh, after the, the video, I'm going to finish it up and then you'll see how I, what it looks like when I'm all done. I just run water over something. I just extend it so that there's not a hard edge. That's not how I would leave that, that leaf. I could almost leave that leaf if I added some yellow into it, but whoa, that's not quite right. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Now, for my background, and then I'll get back to the flower itself, I want to go really dark. And because I have um, the green here on my uh, palette, and I have this magenta, I said I was going to use a red. Uh, the magenta and purple are going to be my uh, choice here just to add to that really intense green. Yes, I could use any red, um, but I choose to use this. It's really making a dark color. I am gonna stick a little red in there to tell you the truth. And what I end up with is this dark, intense color and what that's going to do is really pop the edge of the flower um, I often and I don't mind some of this bleeding together especially on the edges of the picture where I don't want don't care to have any focal anything going on that's important uh, too much of the edges of the picture the edges of the flower are important but not the edge of the picture now this is a, I think this is a leaf in here, but maybe I'll just have a stem, a brown stem coming out. And I'll just make this part of this background. So everywhere I begin to make this dark, puts that into the background. Oh, I know what I was gonna say, sometimes, I will make uh, little holes and fill those in um, so that we get a blurrier background. You can even pop in uh, another color, a wet color, and that tends to make that background more interesting. It gives it some variations. And I still need that to go very dark. So I would keep going all the way around my picture. Uh, I would fill in any of these areas that are going to be background and not necessarily leaves unless they are leaves are part of the bush that's behind this flower. So you would just simply paint that after you've done all your leaves, then you would come back in with this dark, dark background. Okay, again, if I'm not going to finish this one little spot right there with the dark, I would just add water and extend it and then give it another layer when I'm done. Okay, I'm going to switch to my little brush to finish up the centers of the flower, this area right here. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and I, I could mix my red, yellow, and make an orange and do a touch of blue to make this burnt sienna, but that's the perfect color, is that red-brown. So I'm just going to start, and I need some yellow 
and I need some burnt sienna. So I'm just gonna multi brush, multi -brush this. Sometimes I use the brush uh, with just water on it and I thought maybe I need to start with yellow before I start with the burnt sienna. So a lot of these little uh, guys, this is that bumblebee yellow instead of, oh, I mixed it right on top of my Aurelian, but, it, but it's a good yellow. It's a little stronger yellow. I'm doing lots of these little stamens. And now that my, um, now that my flower petals have dried, I can see that I need to darken some of my shadows. These nice yellows are gonna be topped with little burnt sienna. And there are some little places here. Now I'm gonna come back with that burnt sienna. Wow. That's a little, little too much. I'll soften it there. All right. Well, that's what's there. So that's what we need. And the nice thing is that it's kind of bleeding into the yellow. So we have the variations built in. And I see some dark spots even within here that I think we need to have the blue reintroduced to darken that up. So I'm going to pick up a little blue. For instance, right here. And right here. And when I say there's a little bit of blue, it's I think it needs to be mixed with a touch of that burnt sienna. And these are just dark areas where the center of the flower has some stuff going on. I'm also trying to create that edge. And this little edge here. Now my my pink has disappeared and my blue shadows are not quite as strong as they were. So I'm going to put a little more blue in a couple of places where I want the, the petals to be a little more dominant. And then I'll just use this brush to pull with a little light water, with a little bit of water, drag that out. And I may do a little bit more of this after we stop uh, because I think adding this detail is very important. For instance, I think I really need to make this edge of that flower. And, and I could, it, you probably will find that just making these edges pop, the shadows underneath these edges will make a big difference in the way the flower starts to read. Now I see a shadow here, but that's on top. And this is stronger here. Well, if you, if you know what I mean, <laughs> you could go on and on forever. And uh, that's what I'm getting ready to do. If I don't stop, it's very difficult to stop when I know there's so much left to do. And it's, it's all a matter of putting in the rest of the greens, doing a little more detail here, putting on the rest of my leaves, and uh, hopefully uh, the painting will come out as the flower that I want it to be. Okay, so with that said, I will 
return. <clears throat> Say thank you for watching. <laughs>